Hey guys and welcome back to the DIY HVAC Guy YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Dave and I do my best to educate uh, DIYers, homeowners about everything HVAC related. Now, if you watched one of my previous videos, you saw how we were able to use a battery in one of our videos to do a test powering our furnace and also one that involved an inverter plugged into our vehicle. Now, I've got a lot of comments from you guys and I wanted to film a video specifically on what those are a backup to. So everybody says just get a generator and I totally agree, but the whole purpose behind those videos was that in the event of an emergency, when all the generators are sold out, that is back pocket knowledge that you can have and you can be prepared even in the event that you can't find a generator like this one. Now I wanted to show you my setup exactly how I have it set up. Um, I've had this in the shed for the past year, so I haven't started this once, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up. Now, first I'm just gonna give you a preview of our generator here, and then I'm gonna show you how we have it set up with our pigtail at the furnace, and how easy it is to power not only the furnace, but anything else in the house with the exception of the AC. So this is a dual fuel generator, as you can see, and it has LP or liquid propane and then it has regular gasoline. Now what I wanted to do, since I have natural gas set up on our grill, I have a quick connect right here that feeds my gas grill. And so I wanted this to run as a tri-fuel generator. Now you can purchase a Furman tri-fuel generator, but you're gonna spend about close to $1,000. Whereas I got this one for about 500, and I'll leave a link to this exact generator in the video description. So if you wanna pick one of these up before you find yourself in a bad situation, uh, this generator has been awesome. I've used it a handful of times. And so I'll show you what I did here. This is the hose that comes with it for your liquid propane. So I just have that zip tied there. But this is a natural gas regulator. I'll also leave a link to this in the description but I just have it mounted here to the actual frame. And then literally all I did, this is the propane uh, regulator and the pressures are different between natural gas and propane. And so literally all we did was we removed the hose. And as you can see, this is the reason why I have this taped because you do not want spider webs and stuff inside there. So always make sure you cover this. Literally all I did was disconnect this hose that came from the factory on the generator and I rerouted it to here. Now this is the adjustment for this natural gas um, regulator. And in a future video, if you guys would like, I can show you how I set this up. But this is preset to run perfectly with our engine on natural gas. Now again, I haven't started this in a long time and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to start. I have this taped off because again, I don't want junk getting in here. So we're just gonna remove this and this is where we're gonna make our connection to our natural gas. All right, so as you can see, we've got our hose connected to our quick connect. Now the first thing that we need to do once this is connected is we need to prime the system. Now with propane, you don't have to do this. But with this natural gas regulator, you see that there, we have to just press this in and you'll hear the gas or the air being primed out of the system. And once you start to smell propane, this is fully primed and you can let off and we should be ready to start. Now with propane, you do not need to choke because that only applies for a carburetor. So we're just gonna leave this in the run position and we're gonna give it a crank. So we'll set this over to LP and we'll start it up. as easy as that folks um, natural gas is the way to go it will not gum up your carburetor 
Um, if you do choose to use gas, always make sure that you put non-ethanol um, clear gas in here. You can get these at different gas stations, but if you put ethanol fuel in, it will gum up your carburetor. If you must use it for a little bit, um, make sure you drain every drop of fluid out of it. Otherwise, you're going to gum up the system and it's just not going to work good. Now, one thing that we want to make sure that we do before we have power from this running to our furnace or anything is make sure that this main breaker is turned off. This is the main breaker for the whole house. Um, in the event of an emergency where you don't have power, you could even go through and turn all of these off if you wanted to. Um, but this is the one that supplies all the other breakers. It's gonna be labeled with a larger, much larger amperage. So this is a 100 amp service. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the power off here. That is going to kill any power going, coming from the grid to the home and vice versa. Now, once we have our generator up and running, powering the furnace, I'm going to show you with our hot pen with a voltmeter that no power can ever be going back to the grid putting someone in danger's way. All right, so we got the main breaker turned off. No power is going to the home at this point. We've got our extension cord. We're gonna go into the house and always try to use a little bit thicker of an extension cord if possible. If you're in a pinch and you need to use something smaller, you can, but. So we've got our handy dandy M18 light. So we're not working in the dark here. Now, I have this plugged in currently. I'll show you exactly what we're working with here. So if you saw in my previous video, we installed this uh, a couple weeks ago. And the advantage to this is that we simply unplug this, of course, after our switch is turned off. This will never be live. I've had so many people ask me about this. Even with that switch on, this is not going to be live. This is like an, a microwave, like a toaster oven. You plug it in and then it has power, but this is never the source of power. This is going to be our power source. So we're simply going to plug these in together and now we are ready to power the furnace. Now, just for giggles, after we start the generator and our furnace is up and running, I'm going to disconnect this. I just wanna do this for so that you guys can see that no power is going back to the grid when it is powered with this pigtail. So let's go ahead and get our generator up and running and get our furnace powered on. Now, before we hook this up, I just wanted to say that um, this generator I purposely bought so that we could actually use it for our AC on our camper. Now, if you don't need such a big generator, you can purchase maybe something like this that's just a 2000 watt or even a 1500 watt generator. It'll be much more compact and you can still run your furnace as long as it will provide the adequate wattage. I personally just feel like this is an awesome deal if you can pick one of these up for $500. It's been a really good generator. Okay, so just to give you a rundown here, we have a 30 amp uh, 110 outlet here, a 30 amp um, 120 volt RV, and this is what we're actually gonna be using since it's a 20 amp that's the closest amperage to our furnace. We don't wanna plug it into this one because that will allow this to run up to 30 amps. If something goes wrong with it, you don't want that. So we're simply gonna take our extension cord and we're gonna plug it into the uh, one of these 20 amp outlets here. And then we'll go ahead and start it up. We just booted on and as you can see our heater just kicked on so let's go and see what we got as you can see our inducer is running hot surface igniter about 30 seconds we'll have hot air blowing out of the vents so that took a total of like less than 10 minutes 
to start up the generator, swap this. There was no wiring needed. So this is a beautiful setup and just um, making sure that the furnace is just powering this independently. Uh, the fan kicked on. I'm not sure if you heard that or not. And we will have hot air coming out of the vents. Generator sounds the same. It's not struggling in the least bit because we have a 3,500 watt generator. We've got some nice warm air blowing out of the vents. Now, as you can see, our breaker is turned off. Okay, so I've got this removed, turn this on, as you can see there's nothing going to this neutral that goes right into the grid, there's zero power. This is totally dead, so nothing is capable of going back to the grid. Now just so you know this thing works, We've got power here, no power here. So guys, quit saying this is going to kill somebody, this is totally isolated, our furnace is working, none of the power in the house is on, it's all completely turned off. As you can tell, none of these lights work, if you want per further proof. these lights work it's all dead and yet what do you think bud? the furnace is running we're in heat mode we started at 68 or up a degree so one thing to note do not go out there and turn off your generator um, because what that'll do is it'll turn everything off at once and that's not what you want you want to make sure that you're not calling for heat so this little dial on an Ecobee will turn white, indicating that the heat has turned off. Another way you can verify is simply feel the air coming out of the vents. And if it starts to get cool, what that's doing is cooling the heat exchanger and it's pulling all of the remnant heat out of the heat exchanger. What you'll do if you turn it off too quick, you can possibly crack the heat exchanger. So make sure and let it run its uh, course and completely turn off before turning the generator off. All right, so our furnace is cooled off. Uh, we got our generator shut off. Again, just to reiterate, I will leave a link to this generator in the description, as well as a link to that regulator. I still feel like this is an awesome deal. Again, you can buy a smaller generator if you want to but it's just really nice to have options. You can have natural gas, you can have propane, you can have regular gas. And so you can be really set up with this generator um, in multiple different situations. If you're having some trouble finding the link for this generator, simply go to our video description right under this video and click more. There you will see a link for this generator in blue as well as our Amazon storefront where you can browse through all of the HVAC tools and items that I use on a daily basis. Now, if you haven't seen our video on how we installed this outlet switch combo so that this is totally isolated and able to plug into a generator, check out this video right here and we're gonna show you how to do that step-by-step step so that you can be prepared in the event of an emergency. Thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.